and we're specifically talking about uh, the music subsystem and in particular we're going to focus on the vocoder but the vocoder itself has two modes music and voice both modes as of release 1.07 are still very experimental and to some degree it's really just a, a measurement device like an oscilloscope or something that lets you look at sound in a different way um, but it doesn't deliver on the final promise yet of uh, in-game uh, voice communications. So first of all a little review of this button here is the social key and there are three social modes there's text chat, there's piano chat, and there's microphone chat. Oh, okay. But the idea is that you can make a short recording and then analyze it. You can pick any spot in that recording and you can see the spectrum that existed in for a 25th of a second at that moment in time of the song. And if you tap down here, you can move the little cursor line forward through the song and watch how it happens, how it changes in real time. <laughs> anyway, so it's 25 of these a second. What do the bars mean? Well, which bars? <laughs> These guys here? Just colored bars, yeah. Well, first of all, you'll notice the little piano keyboard above. Mm -hmm. So that represents the pitch um, using the MIDI keyboard. Mm -hmm. So um, middle C is this C right here. Mm -hmm. And so the A above middle C is this guy right here. So that's 440 hertz. You can tap anywhere and it'll tell you the frequency was 2093 at that spot. So if you want to know the number, you can do it that way. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's trying to tell you what pitch, what piano pitch it is. So this tallest one here, this orange bar, is centered right on the, the D key, and it's above C4, so it would be D5. Um, and... Um, and it's orange because it's a D. Because as we all know, the colors of the rainbow are red, orange, oh. yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Roy G. Biv. Go C, D, E, F, G, A, B. A, B. Uh -huh. So the mat mapping the, the notes of the C major scale. Um, so anyway, then the other thing is I use the colors for just the numbers one through seven. So R is one, O is orange is two, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm learning it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. I sampled and looked for energy in every single one of these note categories, and this is how much energy I found in each and every one of them. Then I did a pass where I did a peak detection where I just basically did a first derivative and looked for change of slope. Mm -hmm. um, and so those darker gray bars are all, the, and the colored bars together mapped all the places that were, you know, peaks, places where the curve went up and then turned and came back down. So I tell myself I'm only going to be interested in peaks, um, peak notes. Then the question is, some of those would be notes because the singer was actually singing that note or there was a violin in the background playing that note or you know there's some some musician who was intentionally playing that note but other peaks are just harmonics like when i play a single note it's actually rich with harmonics mm -hmm. and so all of these other little peaks show up and i can record them as well but then they become part of the piano roll recording, part of the sequenced recording, and I'll play them back as individual notes. And so the song will have a thousand notes in it where the real song only had 10 notes. Um, it'll be really busy and there's all sorts of reasons not to do it. So most of this research has been about how to intelligently decide what's a 
harmonic and what's not a harmonic. To review what a harmonic is, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, make an instrument with the built-in synthesizer. The synthesizer gives you nine oscillators, but we're going to turn them all off. And now we're going to um, look at just oscillator one, and we're going to make it really loud, and we're going to set it to zero hertz, you know, zero half steps offset. Okay, so this is a sine wave, and if we look at it in the oscilloscope, it can make sawtooths. You can play different frequencies. You can play several at once. And very buzzy. So let's go back to a sine wave. This is just a sine wave. Let's turn on a second oscillator. And let's give him a sine wave that is plus seven from the keyboard. So this will be seven half steps above what I actually am playing. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when I play a C, it's actually going to play a G. If I turn off the first oscillator, you can hear it better. So it's just playing, it's playing a higher note than expected. And this guy is playing the note that is expected. And when I put them together, they do that. Now, the oscilloscope, as you can see, is starting to get more interesting. It's not just a sine wave. It's basically it's two different sine waves. And they're not completely phase locked, so as they shift relative to each other, um, they do that little thing. So if I take the higher pitched one and I start to lower it, you see just the low pitched one. And now if I bring the high pitched one back in, and then take away the low pitched one. Now I'm seeing just the high pitched one. So that's still not explaining harmonics. So what I really wanted to do was I'm going to select a sawtooth. Okay, nice sawtooth. And let's even go down an octave. Big fat sawtooth. Okay, well actually, let's go to the options. And in the nerd options, there's this thing called vocoder input source, which is currently set to microphone, and we'll set it to synth instead. So instead of recording from the microphone, we're going to be recording from whatever's coming out of the synthesizer. So I'm just going to... I'm just recording now. I'm, the vocoder is recording, but we're not playing anything on the synth, so there's nothing coming out. So we go over to the synth, and we'll just play one note. Okay, that's all we did. Now we come back over here, and we see that, oh, now we have a recording. Well, we'll stop the recording. Oh, my. That's loud. If I play back the recording, that's pretty much what we played. But if you look at any point in the recording, you can see that we didn't just play one note. We played a whole bunch of notes. Where this is the first harmonic, or the fundamental, this is the second harmonic, also known as the octave, and it's one octave higher on the keyboard. So if that's a C key, and red means it's a C key, this one is also a C key, one octave higher. Then the third one turns, the third harmonic turns out to be seven half steps above the octave. So if we start from the octave and count seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's this guy. And then the fourth harmonic is just up two octaves, so we're back to the C key. So fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. So what I so this is going into the vocoder, and the vocoder is trying to figure out what the actual notes to be recorded should be. And the fact that it has only painted this one note red means that of all of these things that it saw, that it detected, that it could have written down, it said, nope, those are all harmonics of this guy. This is the important one. This is the only one I need to actually write down. So this is a great success. And as a result of the thinking it did about this, it left behind an opinion dot. <laughs> so directly below the lines, 
our, our opinions. Red opinion is opinion one. Orange opinion is opinion two. Yellow opinion is opinion three. So it's the same Roy G. Biff colors, but just as numbers. And one means, I think this is a fundamental. And two means, I think this is an octave. And three means, I think this is a third harmonic. And four means, I think this is a fourth harmonic, etc., etc. And this time we'll play two notes. We'll play uh, a C and a G at the same time. And off. And then we come over here and we'll stop the recording. So now I played both a C and a G. And look at that. There's a red line and a aqua line on the C and the G. And everybody else was correctly perceived as just being a harmonic. Um, and I'm not deleting them for all time. The microphone is listening to a harmonically rich environment. I'm throwing away the harmonics to get just the raw notes, which I'm writing down. And then later I'm playing the notes back. But at that time I play them on an instrument, on a synthetic instrument. Mm -hmm. And that instrument provides its harmonics. Mm. And you can see how this is actually a, 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 a very coarse sawtooth. This, that 45 degree angle there, that is the original sawtooth that we started with. It's just that it's been, it no longer has an infinite number of harmonics like it had when it was a pure sawtooth. We've converted into a realm where it only has 10 or so harmonics. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's just being recreated by adding together all of these frequencies. Um, I'm still skirting the basic issue of, um, well, I think the problem is that I can't, there's some descriptions I can only do when I have a pen in my hand and I'm drawing something. Mm -hmm. And here I can only point to things that it has drawn. And yeah, it, no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so this represents, so each of these bars is a different frequency, right? Mm -hmm. And you can listen to them by, well, if the sound were up. So that one is giving that sound. This one is providing this sound. This one is providing this sound. This one is providing this sound. And so then the sum of all of those together gives us, which is kind of nice. Yes, beautiful. Um, which is kind of funny because the sawtooth itself was not that beautiful. The sawtooth was very rah, mm -hmm. but this has benefited from having all of those sharp edges kind of filed off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's also made it muddier. And again, my goals for voice in this game are that I want it to be muddy. I want it to not yes. be uh, yes. clear. AG Bear style. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so when I, this was me playing a sawtooth and recording it. If I delete that and come over here and go back to our uh, synthesizer and change it to being a uh, sine wave and then go back over here and record again and play the same thing. Well, we'll take one note, two notes at the same time, just the high note, nothing. Stop recording. Okay, so now here's where we have a little song. It plays different actually plays more than one note. What I was doing this for was so that you could see that it, there were no other harmonics to begin with. So there's no, there's no energy there. Okay, so, but now we go to music. That looks good. So we're recording a groove. Now we're, re the, oh, and we're telling the vocoder that we want to record from the microphone. So we're recording. And now we play this free song. And we kind of look at these lines here to see that it looks like it's a clean recording. It looks pretty good. Um, 60 million already, though. That's pretty loud. So let's bring it down a bit. Okay. Um, so nicely enough, this song doesn't have any um, percussion yet. Probably is going to start about now. Yep. <laughs> so once you get percussion, you can see drums kind of showing up in the lower half here. Boom, mm -hmm. boom. And you can see the psh, 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 psh kind of thing showing up in the, the very high part. And the high frequency things show up as little 
scratchy edges down here, whereas the low frequency things are nice and soft. This rhythm rainbow is just kind of another expression of what notes have been present over time. And here, for example, it feels that the notes were present in the combination for a B major chord. Here it feels there was an E flat minor chord. So in theory, it'll show you chord progressions. The chords have to be held a pretty long time for them to see it, for it to see. So let's just stop. And thank you, copyright free music. So that's what it looks like. And if we just listen to the spectral playback, which plays back all of the harmonics, this that's plays back cool. all the peaks. That sounds really good. Yeah, this carries, it keeps a lot of the character of it. It does have a little bit of like an underwater quality to it. Oh, actually, I have to be careful because sometimes I've accidentally turned on the reverb. But not here. Now, if I switch to format, and now it's only playing the colored notes. And that needs to sound like you're hearing the entire song, muffled, but, but all the song. I mean, you hear the boom, boom, boom of the drum. Definitely hearing a lot of brrrr, brrrr. Um, anyway, so that's the spectral recording. We'll come back over here. Oops, left that running. And we'll just play back. That's pretty good. So this is just the notes, not the harmonics, that it recorded into a groove. And then I'm playing it back on my attempt to simulate a Hammond organ. That's actually pretty excellent. Okay, so I can drag in on this control and zoom in on a smaller region of the song. Mm -hmm. So this is probably a moment between notes where I really shouldn't have perceived any notes at all. It might be a percussive moment. There might be some happening right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I picked up these three notes here I think I should not have. Hmm. Um, yeah. Now it's loud again, and that's still that's that's a lot of notes. But um It's um, it's a little, a little mind numbing to stare at these things for a long time. I I, I bet, but it's but it's it's like, it's like, even though it, I mean for me it's kind of imperceptible. You've done a good job of explaining what the different colors mean and everything, but there still is just like a, I don't know like a, a beauty that you can get lost in, even without really understanding the meaning behind it. Yeah. Well, like here, this aqua F sharp, and then it goes away, but it's clearly, it's still the loudest thing, but now it's down here. So now I think that that's the note and this is just the octave. But before they both qualified as notes. So what's up with that? And then this one just goes on and off, on and off. Hmm. 
and I'm pretty sure it's the one that should have been going all along. If there's another, if there's a note seven to the right of me, mm -hmm. I might well be a second harmonic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so this guy could be the third harmonic, in which case this is the primary and I should have been turned off, in which case this is the right answer and this is the wrong answer. Anyway, that is perceived as a b b b b b b because I am, in fact, b b b b b there. Let's, let's uh, switch to voice mode because actually the harmonics make more sense there. Mm -hmm. So go out of music mode into voice mode. And for this, we're going to use another YouTube. But now we need a talking YouTube. This guy has a really great voice. And I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Mr. Carlson's Lab. This is a nice man. I think he's in Canada somewhere. And he restores antique electronic devices and he does it with great care and precision and he films it really well and uh, it's very nostalgia provoking okay but anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to record some voice and we're going to play his voice and the amplitude is about 20 million that's pretty good He's talking pretty fast. It's looking pretty good. So it turned off. Um, but anyway, in the case of voice, uh, what happens is um, your vocal cords um, buzz and basically make a sawtooth. And that sawtooth is rich with harmonics, as we saw before. And then it bounces around inside your chest cavity and your mouth and stuff as you move your lips and things, um, which is just a filter. And so all those harmonics go through that filter and a lot of them get thrown away, get suppressed, and maybe some of them resonate and get a little bit amplified. But they're just harmonics and therefore their frequency is completely controlled by the frequent, the pitch of your vocal cords. So if your vocal cords are going at 100 hertz, uh, the harmonics are going to be 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300 hertz, 400 hertz, 500 hertz, blah, blah, blah. And there's not going to be any 105 hertz or 223 hertz. There's just going to be exactly 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300 hertz. The, the amount of 200 hertz might be really small and the amount of 500 hertz might be huge. But the fact that it's 500 is entirely based on the fact that the fundamental was 100. If the fundamental goes to 150, then suddenly the second harmonic is 300, but it's exactly 300. It's not 312, it's 300. So what I do for the voice stuff is I try to figure out what your fundamental is. I try to figure out what's a harmonic and what's the fundamental. The same as in music. But it's easier because I'm really only planning on hearing one voice at a time instead of a bunch of instruments. And so when we, when we look at him talking, we can see that this red dot here is, is the fundamental. So that, and if we tap up here, we can see that's 146 hertz. So his fundamental is 146 hertz. His first harmonic is an octave above that or 300 hertz, third harmonic, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. <clears throat> so if I want to record this, if I want to share it with someone by sending it to them, and I don't want to send all of this data, all I have to do is say, hey, I know that his um, fundamental pitch is 15, and I know that the amplitude of his first through seventh harmonics are you know, 10, 50, 112, 65, 42. And I, I use a sort of a compressed logarithmic scale for that. So basically it costs me one character per, per weight. So I've got a budget of eight characters basically per spectrum. So I compress the entire spectrum into 
a string of eight ASCII characters. And then I have 25 of those a second, so it still adds up. Um, but to play it back, I have a sawtooth oscillator that I make oscillate at this pitch. And then I set up a handful of filters that are at, at these pitches, at, at the harmonic pitches. And then I just play the sawtooth through those filters and add together the result, and, and that's what you hear. So, I'm sorry, you, you want it to be intelligible or unintelligible? Well, the part of me that wants to write good code wants it to be perfect. <laughs> so here's the original recording. And then the spectral recording, including harmonics. You can almost make it out. And that would get better and better the more harmonics I included, the, the higher frequencies I included. The more harmonics I stepped that out to, the tighter a fit I would have and the clearer his speech would be. Um, and then the, at the format level, I stop even sooner, as it were. So it just sounds muddy. But if you re knew what he was saying, you would actually be able to understand that. Yes, my left hand would like it to sound crystal clear, mm -hmm. but that would not do my game any good because mm -hmm. I don't want crystal clear speech between little kids who yeah. might be saying bad words. For sure. Or so, hearing bad words. So then... So for them, I want an alien ham radio. I want uh, the mythos is you're playing with aliens. You don't speak their language. The device is giving you a ham radio. And here they sound like. So I guess my the question I have is, so, so that, to me that sounds unintelligible. So is it mission accomplished? Or is it not unintelligible in the way that you want it to be unintelligible. Well, that's that's very germane because basically what I want to do is have it be pretty darn intelligible and then intentionally distorted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be distorted just because I couldn't get it to be intelligible in gotcha. the first place. Gotcha. Um, which is more or less where I am right now. But, you know, it doesn't matter because I I have to dial it back. It it conveys basically, you know, I can tell if you're shouting or if you're whispering. I can tell if you're happy or if you're sad. Um, and I, I think it's an interesting game dynamic where you could, in theory, just speak freely to strangers, comfortable in the knowledge that they can't actually understand what you're saying. But that, that you're really talking to real people. And I don't know. Maybe that's incredibly stupid, but um, it's an experiment for game purposes. But um, I'm I'm consumed right now with just the the math of uh, these harmonics. Like like this is really good. This is a really good harmonic breakdown of uh, of this guy's voice. And I don't think my playback is as perfect. Okay, here it failed. So what happened here? Okay, it went from there to... This clearly should have been a second harmonic. So that guy... So that's the real first harmonic. So the real first harmonic went down there, and some for some reason, that guy qualified. So here, it was being generous and tolerated that. And because it had other peaks that were just happen to look like higher numbered harmonics it doesn't it doesn't have a second harmonic it just has a third harmonic it doesn't have a fourth it has a fifth sixth and seventh when you perceive it as this guy but if had it perceived it as this guy as being the fundamental it would have had a full second third fourth harmonic but my guess is that these low pitches tend to be, have uncertainty in the peak and that this peak is not completely lined up. Yeah, like so. 
So here it was technically it was it was a high A, and here now it's a medium A. So um, it's it's not quite as simple as saying A and A sharp anymore because there's four tones instead of two tones. But um, uh, yeah, so that's why it didn't perceive that because this peak was perceived as happening. I don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of broad, and it it perceived the second the right hand side of it as being the the peak instead of the really the center of it um, which happens and what my algorithm is supposed to do is it's supposed to end up having this information push back like these guys they look at their relationship and they say well clearly clearly you're a second I'm a third and you're a fourth so therefore there must be a fundamental down here somewhere Oh, well, there isn't one at exactly the pitch we expected, but here's one really close. It's probably the one we're looking for. So it tries to do a lot of that kind of thinking, but clearly here it, it didn't. <laughs> so uh, as far as what's new in the vocoder, that's really about it. And generally speaking, um, Traditionally, so I'm using it to uh, the the idea being that say, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna write a song. By gosh, I'm gonna put it into music mode, and I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna write me a song. I'm going to write right now. Oh, oh why is that not working? Yes. Oh, yes, that's right, because this guy is being driven from there. So I can't. Sorry, I would have to unplug this wire, and I'm afraid if I unplugged it, and I, it wouldn't plug back in right because I've had trouble with it. And I didn't set up another tablet, which I could have demonstrated that on. But the idea is that, yes, I would sing myself a little song, and I'd come over here and look at that. There would be a recording of that little song, just as if I'd typed it on the piano here. So we've recorded a little test song. Now... We go back over here and we vocoder input source from the synthesizer again. And we are in music mode and we go record. And what's going to happen is anything the synthesizer plays is going to be heard by the vocoder, which is going to record it and send it back into the synthesizer, send it back into the sequencer. So what will happen is we'll get a second track to match the first track. But this track is the result of the vocoding. We'd like it to be a perfect match. It's not. We'd like it to be perfectly lined up. It's a little delayed. But it's got roughly the right shape. Come together and see what that sounds like. It really made up a lot of notes there. <laughs> and this is the kind of thing that FM synth leads to. But technically, oh, I already talked about this stuff. Hi, these are the release notes for version 1.07 slash 1.08 of Sin Space Drone Runners, a space shooter game for Android. Today being played on my 10 inch Android Kindle H Fire HD, which I like a lot. It has a huge screen. So anyway, it's a space game and we've covered that elsewhere. Um, it has a piano and it has a 
a, a subsystem I'm calling the vocoder. But now I have to go into lecture mode where I will dansplain um, what's going on here. So for that, I let there be light. Okay, and hopefully the camera can just kind of figure that out. That's interesting. Um, okay, so sound. What is it? Okay, let's rewind from there. The vocoder, I'll write it down here. Vocoder. Voice encoder? Vocal encoder? Um, in the traditions of music synthesizers, um, this would be anything that basically took in your voice with a microphone and then modulated it or was modulated by it to make a kind of a cool sound at the other end. In my case, it's really more of a, a, a low quality tape recorder. Um, and so for our first, oh, I can't do that. Oh, that's what I need. Yeah, I need a whole nother tablet to do this uh, lecture. So we'll be warming this one up. This is a model 2018 eight inch Kindle Fire HD, which I also like and is very affordable. I got this one during the um, Thanksgiving day sale. I think it was like $39. Anyway, definitely a good deal on that. But the idea is that um, it records from the microphone. And, well, there's basically a, a looping buffer. So it records uh, 60 seconds worth of speech. Well, of sound. And this buffer then loops around, and the next 60 seconds is recorded on top of the first 60 seconds. But as the data comes in, so, anyway, so I can play back anything that happened in the last 60 seconds. I can play back as just a regular recording. So you can get an idea for what the sound quality is of the actual recording. But in real time, as the stuff is coming in, I'm also sending it to my spectrum analyzer. And this is, this is kind of like a harmonica with 128 little holes, where each hole is a different note of the musical spectrum. Half step, all the half steps, 128 half steps. It's somewhat bigger than a grand piano, but you know the, the bottom ones are not audible, and the top ones, I think the top ones are audible. But um, you don't care about that. Anyway. So what this does, it's a bunch of filters at, at these musical frequencies. And then what comes out of it are little charts like this that show me little peaks, little energy peaks at the frequencies where I heard something. And then, and this, I, I also record. And so this whole spectrum here, I take a snapshot of it. And then I have a list like this kind of of the of all the snapshots. So you start recording, and this is what I'm actually recording is these spectrum snapshots. Can you see that? That's kind of off screen, huh? So each of these spectrum snapshots is one of those spectrums. Spectrum, spectrum, and over time. So this is T0, T1, T2, t t t And I do these at 25 per second. Um, I'm sampling the microphone, in case you're interested, at 16,000 samples per second. And I'm only doing mono right now. I, I, I think I'm going to go into stereo playback eventually, but not yet. Um, but anyway, so 25 times a second, I, I take all the samples I've collected, the 16,000 samples, 125th of that, which I should know, but 
I would now have to divide that. So divide it by 100 and then multiply by 4. So 640 samples. If that's right, then you have to be impressed. If it's wrong, well, you expected too much of me. Um, so every 640 samples, I have enough data that I can do the math to generate the spectrum. Um, and I'm not doing Fourier analysis. I'm doing, um, well, they're called biquad filters, but it's just math. And basically you have a, a couple of nodes and they're sort of, they're sort of cross wired like this. I guess you could think of them as being sort of an infinite series of nodes going into the past of old data. And as each new data comes in, it gets added to this. It, it becomes the new front node. And the old front node becomes the new back node. And then energy is remembered basically in the back node. That's not accurate. Anybody out there who really knows how this stuff works will have a good laugh over my poor description of that. But basically, there's just a bunch of weighted multiplications and additions happening inside of this thing. So it's not, it's like every new sample, I have to do like two multiplies and uh, three additions or something like that. Um, it's not super expensive, but you do it for 128 filters and it adds up and it can, it can slow you down. And on, a, on an older tablet, it does in fact lag out. Um, to ameliorate that, what I try to do is I, I actually have some really wide filters like that just measure any energy on the left side of the of, of the spectrum versus the right side of the spectrum. And if I don't find any energy at all in the right side of the spectrum, then I don't bother to check any of the individual notes in that area. And so I do a binary search. I look on the left, I look on the right, then I look at the if there's any energy, then I cut it in half and look on its left and right. And if there's those have any energy, I cut them in half and look on their left and right. What I end up with is this long recording, potentially. Although it does, uh, well, hopefully it doesn't crash. It does stop recording after a while. And I think that's after about 10,000 um, spectrums. Which sounds like a lot, but at 25 per second, well, if it was 100 per second, that would be 100 seconds. So 400 seconds, so 360 seconds is six or seven minutes before this blows up. Um, and I got other things that blow up after four or five minutes. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of designed around the length of a pop song. And I, I don't put a, a sufficient thought into my destination. It's like... This is a space game. This is all optional. Um, basically, this spectral recording, I'm going to use it in one of two ways. I'm going to use it in the music sense, where the simplest case, I can just play it back, and it's a different way to hear sound. Uh, these spectral recordings don't sound like microphone recordings. Um, and they sound worse, <laughs> but uh, I think if you process them, they might actually sound, you know, pretty. Um, but anyway, so there's the the music aspect of it, but then there's also the voice aspect of it, and that's why vocoder is in the name. Although even in the in the music aspect, the implication is you're taking something that was musical, like someone singing, and you're decoding it and turning it into notes like you would normally get from say a MIDI controller. So I can end up, the music path ends up going to the sequencer. So it ends up recorded as notes on a track. Track notes. I must be close to the bottom of the screen by now. Yeah, track notes. Wow, that is profoundly bad lighting. Sorry. Well, at least the camera's making an effort to, to adjust. That hasn't always been the case for me. But for the voice environment, um, to the degree that you're, well, then you'd be in music mode. <laughs> so if you want to go to the sequencer, you have to be in music mode. In voice mode, you can still sing. 
uh, it just doesn't go to the sequencer. Instead, it goes to the, um, what am I calling it? I'm going to call it the Alien Ham Radio. Uh, yeah. Alien Ham Radio. And the idea there is that um, if you've been following my films, you'll know that I, I want to have in-game voice communications, but I don't want to have in-game voice communications because I don't want the responsibility for people saying really horrible things. However, I want to, I want to have a human connection, right? I want to have a, an animal to animal personal, by the way, I'm, we recently got a kitten. And so I've got all these modules I'm working on now that are basically to make the game appeal to cats. But, uh, the alien hand radio fits in with the metaphor that the people you're playing with are in fact aliens, not, not you, you lucked into this control panel that lets you talk to these machines that are out there in the galaxy. But the other people who have lucked into it are not on Earth as a rule. So even if you had voice communications with them, you wouldn't understand what they were saying because they're speaking some alien language that you would have no way of understanding. Um, and you'd be hearing them over some sort of radio, some sort of you know subspace thing. So it would add further distortion. Um, and basically the idea is you will hear voices and maybe they're coming from an NPC and maybe they're coming from another person. It's just to distort your voice in a way that you cannot meaningfully abuse people. <laughs> but you can laugh and sing and share anecdotes that people don't really know what your words are, but they can tell from the tone of your voice that you're happy about it. You know, a form of communications without the actual words. Um, so that's my art. And, uh, if it works, um, everyone can pretend that I had an actual idea. Um, but in fact, it's just a spectral recorder that can play back the spectral recordings. Um, and that's pretty much what the basic vocoder does. But as far as what I need to blabber about is, um, and say, so I need to do some processing <laughs> on the stream of spectrums, the 25 spectrums per second different processing for voice and music. For voice, I'm kind of assuming that it's one person talking or singing and that they have a vocal cord that is, can you see this? No, you cannot. Okay, a single person speaking and their spectral makeup is going to be a pulse here, a peak here where their actual fundamental is, and then peaks at the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, harmonics of that. And a moment later, when I say hello, and I, my voice goes, hello, when I go, oh, my fundamental goes up. So the fundamental goes up and then that raises all of the harmonics, but they're still harmonics. Now they're harmonics of this frequency instead of harmonics of that frequency. So if this was F, our first, this second harmonic, it, the fundamental is also called the first harmonic. I have to always say that. The second harmonic, also known as an octave, um, is twice F. So if F was 400 hertz, then an octave up would be 800 hertz. And then the third harmonic is three times the frequency. The fourth harmonic is four times the frequency, etc. 
Well, it's still true. 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, but now they're different pitches because the fundamental changed, so these changed. So in the case of voice, what I'm trying to do as I analyze the spectrums that go by is out of all the crap that comes out of those filters, I'm trying to find something that is the fundamental. So I'm just trying to track the fundamental over time. And ultimately, that's what I'm going to distribute. I'm going to tell the other players, oh, well, his fundamental started here, then it went to here, then it went to there, then it went to there, then it came down to here, then it went to there, then it went to there, then it went to there. And then in addition to telling them the pitch of the fundamental, I'm also going to tell them the loudness at each of these points and the loudness of the first uh, six harmonics. Well, harmonics two through seven, <laughs> six more harmonics. So a total of seven harmonics if you count the fundamental as a harmonic. For any given fundamental, I already know exactly where the harmonics should be. So I don't have to tell you where they were. I have to tell you where the fundamental was, and I have to tell you how loud each of the harmonics was, and then that's enough. Then you can figure out, well, if the fundamental is that, then I know the pitch of this harmonic will be twice that, and this one will be three times that. And he's told me how loud this one was, which could be you know, zero. could be that that harmonic was not represented in that, in that frame, but then it might have shown up a moment later. Um, but again, there's only one real signal the vocal cords and everything else is just dynamic filtering. It's very important um, because that's how we detect vowels and diphthongs and all that good stuff. Um, speech is a, it, it, it <coughs> speech also has non-periodic waveforms. So when you say cheddar ch -ch -ch, or shush or t it, um, you're doing little explosive percussive events, and they are not covered by this. Uh, they would make the speech more intelligible. <laughs> but anyway, so in the case of voice, my goal is to figure out what the fundamental was, and then how much energy was in each of its um, harmonics. Um, and then that becomes uh, seven numbers, if, if I look at them in the debugger. And, I, and they all fit, I can compress them all into um, a single integer, which is what ends up getting distributed, is lists of integers. I don't know for a fact what limits I'm going to put in, um, but there will be limits put in, um, so that uh, probably a maximum length on each individual transmission, and certainly a certain amount of... Um, token sharing to prevent everybody from talking at the same time. I want it to be a rare, interesting thing as opposed to a common, irritating thing. But of course, it's up to the players to decide how it ends up being abused. <laughs> um, but I, I'll have to have spam and it should obey my muting kind of thing. So if you have a, a, bad, a bad egg, I don't want him to be able to even waste your bandwidth. Um, you know, I wonder, I, this might be exactly the place where, um, it would make sense to vote that if, uh, to, to let the server know when you mute someone and then let the server say, well, dude, everyone's muting you. I'm going to just automatically mute you for everyone else and not send your packets to them. So therefore, you do not exist and cannot interfere with their game. But I'm not going to boot you. I might move you to a spectator, though. That's an interesting thought. But um, the problem with designs like that is that if the bad guys coordinate well enough, they can, you know, they can appear to be the moral majority when really they're just a bunch of whippersnappers out there trying to cause trouble. Get off my lawn! So, in the case of music, it's a little different because 
any given frame, I might hear this note from this instrument from, you know, I might hear this note from the bass and I might hear this note from the singer and I might hear this note and this note from a violin and I might hear these notes from a piano all at the same time. So it's, I don't have a single fundamental that I'm trying to decode. I have all these fundamentals I'm trying to decode because each of these guys comes with his own, you know, harmonics, only they aren't nice like this. They're full on harmonics that just go like that. So everybody's just overlapping and I just get the peak information. And so I have to say, well, is this a fundamental of its own or is it just an octave harmonic of this guy? And I, I basically, I try to go through all of the peaks I found in that frame and come up with a plausible explanation for every one of them. So it's like, and I can change my mind, but basically I look at this guy and I say, well, he's a nice strong note. He could totally be a fundamental. But then I look at the expected distance and I say, is there any chance that there's a, that there's energy an octave above him? And is there any chance that there's energy at a, you know, third harmonic distance or a fourth harmonic distance. So I check all of the distances to his expected harmonics. Well, when I'm asking, is he a fundamental? This is what I do. And I say, well, you know, I don't know that the energy is here because of this. This could be somebody else's fundamental, but it works as an octave for this guy. And if there's enough lucky hits, it's like, well, gee, I found, I found plausibly six harmonics for this guy he might really be a fundamental. And then I can start looking to the left and say, well, is there somebody down an octave of me or down, you know, a third uh, below me? Um, and if so, well, maybe that votes for me not being a, a, a fundamental because this guy, if I'm just an octave of this guy, then he's the fundamental. And I can even look, I can say, well, if, if he's the fundamental and I'm the octave, then there should be a third here. Oh, there is. Hmm. And then, so basically I have sort of an iterative uh, analysis. It's not real. I go, I go left to right and I'm willing to, to look, look for each one I'm evaluating. I'm allowed to look left and right through the entire uh, peak list. So it's, it's basically an N squared analysis where N is the number of peaks, which is usually less than 10 and just between 1.07 and 1.08 I kind of radically redesigned that algorithm because um, I'd kind of originally I hadn't really been factoring the harmonic stuff into my analysis I was just looking at peaks and saying well I assume each one of these is a note and then it became obvious that many of them were harmonics and so then it was became well which one of these are harmonics you know and I'll just get rid of them and then I th finally came to the realization, well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get rid of them in the sense that I am not going to play them. I'm not going to record them as a, as a MIDI note, um, but they're valuable information. I'm not going to get rid of them because I need them both to mutually reaffirm which things are the fundamentals. Um, but also I can draw data from that to like if I want to make a new instrument. Um, I can use that to program my oscillators automatically. So I, I have this key for that that's never done anything, and now I have the information I need to actually do that. So that's cool. Anyway, <clears throat> so then um, 25 times a second, I take a spectrum, I analyze the spectrum, and I figure out which are the fundamentals. And then I say, okay, those are probably notes. So then for each of those, I track how loud they are over time. And, um, and when they get loud enough, I say, oh, notes start. And when they get quiet enough, I say, notes stop. And then they get loud again, I say, start. And they get quiet again, and I say, stop. And so, on your piano roll, this becomes a little rectangle, you know, note, note, scrolling by. <clears throat> and this one, you know, note, note, and this one, note, note. And so we have a chord here. Do, 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 do. Um, and these, those events, 
end up game going into the sequencer. The same as if you had played them on the little piano. Bing, 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 bing. Um, so you maybe these were you singing into SynSpace, or maybe you were playing your guitar or playing your recorder or clapping your hands with your friends, or let's pretend there's some enjoyable social activity you could be engaged in that would result in musical tones being detected, which can then be re recorded by the sequencer. And then you, after that, you can edit them and play them back and, and recast them. Because when you play them back, um, you play them back on an instrument, on a virtual instrument. So you may have been playing the guitar, but when they get played back, Maybe they're played back on a sine wave or a tri triangle wave or a, a simulation of a violin or whatever. Um, that's the fun part. Um, once you get past the... That's a horrible recording. I played much better than that. Um, and... That's kind of what I wanted to say about that aspect of it all.